Hey guys, and welcome back to Symagically AI. This is the eighth episode, and this is the story of Milton Keynes, the oldest man. Here we go. Milton Keynes was born in London in the year 1864 to Stephen Keynes and a supernatural mother that even he didn't know. I'll tell you, his mother was actually a fairy who broke her world's most important law about not actually getting involved with a human's life and having children with them. When Milton was born, Stephen had everything to be proud of, but wasn't allowed to reveal to his son who his mother was until he was old enough to understand it. In 1865, after a year of living quietly, Chronica, Milton's mother, was arrested by her world's council and sent back there to stand trial. Milton was only a year old at the time, so he didn't understand what was going on. In 1869, Milton began his basic education under the tutelage of Mr. Richard Armstrong, who would tutor him in literacy, maths and social skills by bringing his young daughter Jane to share his lessons and play with him. And the two became fast friends. In 1875, as he turned 11, Milton was invited to attend Sherlock School for the next seven years, and he accepted his place at the school. Jane, on the other hand, was going to St. Albright School for Girls, as Richard didn't trust co-educational schools, so the friends were separated during their school years. They didn't like it, but were forced to accept it with the promise to reunite every holiday, and after they'd left school. Between 1875 and 1882, Milton attended Sherlock School as a member of Ambrose House. He excelled in his studies, and was the best behaved student in the school, becoming a dormitory monitor in his third year, prefect in his fifth, and head boy in his seventh. He ran the corridors with an iron fist. At the same time, Jane was attending St. Albright School for Girls as a member of Angel Wing's house, and a very studious pupil. She went against the rules, becoming a junior prefect in her third year, senior prefect in her fifth, and head girl in her seventh. They kept their promise to reunite every holiday, Christmas, Easter and summer. By the time they left their respective schools in 1882, they were thrilled to be fully reunited. Realising they were in love, they started dating. In 1884 he married Jane and it was, oh, the happiest day of their lives. He was also now a bank officer and they had a steady flow of income. They were a very happy couple and loved each other very much. In 1886, he became a father to a son named Michael, and they loved him to pieces. In 1889, he became a father to a daughter named Mary, and they loved her to absolute pieces. Their family was now complete, as they'd only planned to have a small family. In 1898, Jane joined the suffragette movement in an attempt to give women equal rights with men. Milton was actually in favour of this movement, as he believed it was unfair for women to be treated as inferior to men. In 1903, after many years of wondering who his birth mother was, he got confirmation when he came into possession of a photograph of him as a baby with both of his parents. He saw from it that his birth mother had been a fairy, as he could see by the wings she was keeping still. This shocked him to the core. He was half fairy, and he was only just learning this now. After 39 years, why couldn't it have been sooner? He was furious with his father for keeping this from him all these years. Jane tried to calm down, but she couldn't, and neither could their children, Mike and Mary, who were mesmerized by this revelation. Their paternal grandmother was a real fairy, an actual magical being, but sadly they were never going to meet her, as her race executed her for having a child with a human. In his fury, Milton unleashed a powerful wave of magic, which ended up freezing time. After realizing this, he released a second wave, resuming time. Years went by as Mike and Mary grew up and left home to start their own lives, going on to have families of their own, making him a proud grandfather. And he adored his grandchildren. In 1923, Jane passed away from a terminal illness which was very devastating and he went into a very deep depression. 
In 1932, he decided to write his will and had it looked over by his lawyer. In 1933, he retired from his job at the bank to live quietly with the rest of his family. In 1935, he willingly moved into a retirement home as he felt he needed to be there. Many more years passed and he found himself burying his children and then his grandchildren all before he died, devastated by the knowledge that he'd outlived all of his loved ones. He saw all his milestone birthdays, 75 in 1939-80, in 1944-85, in 1949-90, in 1954-95, in 1959-100, in 1964, and so on, and so on. He reached his 150th birthday in 2014, which amazed both him and everyone in the world. His health started to decline a year later, but this was a very slow process. Here we are now in 2024, and Milton is currently 160 years old and still alive, but only just. Oh no, he's just passed away. Wait a minute, what's happening? He's levitating and his body is rejuvenating and revitalizing him. This must be his magical blood taking control and bringing him back to life as a magical being.